Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Anil Taylor. I am a consultant gynecologist and I practice in the UK. Uh, in this short video, I want to uh, go over what a loop biopsy of the cervix is all about. Now, I have produced uh, multiple other videos uh, on a similar topic, so I've covered quite a lot of other areas. Um, uh, which would be relevant to this video. Uh, so I have, uh, uh, in other videos, explained things about abnormal smears and uh, the difference between precancer and cancer, uh, what a colposcopy test is all about, uh, generally how abnormal smears are treated. So in this, in this video, I want to cover specifically what a loop biopsy involves, because that is one of the commonest ways of uh, treating uh, ab um, abnormal smears. Now, um, to understand um, uh, who is uh, generally treated with a loop biopsy, um, we need to understand a little bit about uh, how smears are graded. Uh, so smears can be low grade or high grade. All this has been covered in uh, previous videos. And so the high grades are the ones um, where the abnormality is uh, deemed to be either moderate or severe. Now, um, all this is in the precancer uh, range. And for it to go from precancer to cancer can take anything from 5 to 15 years. So, um, uh, essentially the purpose of uh, smears and colposcopy is to identify the abnormality when it is still a precancer, uh, usually in the high grade uh, range of the abnormality and uh, when it is treated there it is highly effective and uh, literally takes only about five minutes or so to treat. So um, if the loop biopsy is generally carried out uh, during a colposcopy examination. So as to what a colposcopy examination is has been covered specifically in a, another video. But generally speaking, it is uh, just uh, 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 where we uh, examine the cervix and the magnification and uh, wash the cervix, uh, wash the mucus away from the cervix using a mild vinegar solution and uh, that acetic acid, the vinegar solution, uh, also shows up the abnormal areas uh, as a patch of white. Um, so that uh, is how we identify the abnormal cells on the cervix. Um, and so uh, once the patch has been identified and uh, 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 if it is a high-grade abnormality, meaning um, either the, the, cervic, the, the smear itself uh, was in a severe range or a recent punch biopsy has been taken and that has confirmed a, a high-grade abnormality uh, on biopsy, then uh, uh, generally speaking, the abnormal area will be treated by taking it away uh, under local anesthetic. So uh, if that uh, is the cervix, what we would do is we would initially put some local anesthetic in usually four spots um, uh, in, in, in those areas. Uh, and it's, the, the local anesthetic would take about 15, 20 seconds to put in. Uh, and of course, that is the bit that is uncomfortable. Uh, it's like going to the dentist. Uh, the initial local anesthetic can be uncomfortable, but once that is in, that's it. Uh, then any other procedures done on the cervix usually do not hurt. So once the local anesthetic is in, uh, we would then take a special loop of wire, very thin wire, uh, connect it up to a, a certain electricity generator, and uh, by passing a special type of current through that wire, uh, it essentially scoops away the, the area of the cervix um, uh, where the white patches. <clears throat> and uh, it literally, the, the whole procedure, I mean, the looping away uh, would take a minute. And then once it has been looped away, the raw areas will 
bleed a little bit um, and uh, obviously they need to be stopped so we will then uh, cauterize those areas again with more diathermy um, so using uh, so changing the the wire into uh, another uh, uh, electrode which has got a, uh, a ball as a tip and uh, by touching the raw areas where the bleeding is occurring the the area becomes cauterized and the bleeding stops so the whole procedure the, the putting the local anesthetic in the scooping away and stopping the bleeding usually is all achieved within five minutes and that is all it takes to treat a high-grade smear abnormality and of course that is what we want to do to in order to prevent a much more serious problem which is that of cervical cancer. So that essentially is a loop biopsy. It is also called a, a Let's biopsy. Um, and the biopsy that is taken, of course, will be looked at under the microscope and the pathologist will, uh, uh, will report back and, and let us know uh, how much abnormality there was, whether it has all been removed or not. Now, before this loop biopsy is carried out, um, of course, it will be explained to you um, and uh, during that explanation, there will be a few things that you will be asked not to do uh, immediately after the procedure. Now, um, my own practice is to, to, to tell patients not to uh, have any sexual intercourse or use any tampons for at least four weeks after the procedure of uh, a loop biopsy. The reason uh, that we advise against this is because the raw area where, which we have cauterized, uh, we don't want it to become infected because if it becomes infected, then there is a risk of very heavy torrential bleeding and sometimes that bleeding can be quite heavy and uh, uh, can easily become life-threatening. That fortunately is not common, but generally speaking, we want to prevent that by avoiding anything that could cause infection. Now, of course, we would, we would tell the patient that there will be some light bleeding or a discharge, and that can last from anything from two to six weeks, and that is normal. Now, if, if that is going to be a problem for you because, for instance, you have a planned holiday or you may be going swimming, and, um, then uh, it wouldn't be a good idea to have the procedure at that clinic visit. And therefore, you need to make that clear to the person who is seeing you so that they can postpone the treatment to another date. Now, uh, you will also be... Uh, uh, told about the success rate of, of this procedure. Now, um, the, the loop biopsy is uh, fairly successful in removing the abnormality. Uh, I would say about 85 to 90 percent um, uh, successful in getting rid of the precancer cells, meaning if we were to uh, repeat the smear, say six months down the line, then the smear will be normal at that stage. So that's the sort of success of the loop biopsy in treating the um, abnormality. Now, does, it, does this procedure affect uh, or does it cause any problems in any future pregnancies that you may be planning? Now, generally speaking, um, with a loop biopsy, the risks are, uh, for future pregnancies are very, very, very small. Um, research is seeming to suggest that there may be a slightly increased risk of uh, a miscarriage, uh, but that risk is only slightly raised. Um, and uh, yes, those who have had more of these loop bars, because there are some women who have repeated problems with with abdominal smears and end up having repeated loop biopsies. Of course, those are women who have had more removed from their cervix and therefore their cervix becomes weaker and, may, and they may be the ones uh, where uh, problems in pregnancy could occur. But generally speaking, if you've had one of these loop biopsies, usually there isn't a, 
big problem in future pregnancies. So um, that essentially is all I want to say about loop biopsies. Um, there are many other videos that I have uh, uh, made on a similar topic. Uh, please go and search them out. Um, and if you find these uh, videos uh, helpful, then please consider subscribing uh, or clicking the like button. Thank you very much. Until next time, please stay safe.